Hi, so I'm Derek. I've been coming to Geobot quite a few times. This is probably the most technical presentation we've seen tonight. Um, it involves databases, it involves stuffs. Um, I found this thing showing up. Okay, let's go. All right, so I'm talking about MongoDB. MongoDB is a uh, paper engine. But it has geospatial features. All we're talking about is geospatial features. And it is, it is not Postgres. It's not Postgres at all. It's actually very basic geospatial support. But it's, as part of the database, is actually something that you use to gather with other data to do with queries. Actually, my idea of using OpenStreetMap data and importing it into MongoDB was actually so that I could do routing, very much like uh, Richard was talking about earlier. So I can do routing by querying along streets to figure out whether the parks may buy it. Talking from OSRM to MongoDB. I never got there uh, because I didn't have the time yet. And there's also not a very good Google drive from MongoDB yet. So that would be a side project number 17, I suppose, by that time. Just not the time for it. So a little bit about MongoDB. It is, it is not a relational database. It's a database that basically stores documents. And uh, each document is stored in a collection table and then you store those in the database. And the interesting thing is that unlike a relational database, each document in a collection doesn't actually have to look the same. So I've got a small example here. All the examples are in JSON format. JSON is basically what all the examples use in the be. And what you see here is instead of having just a simple values, you actually have fields that have like compound values. So it has arrays in there. And arrays with all embedded objects. And that's something you cannot really easily do in a relational database. And this actually makes certain features very, very handy. So, it being a normal database that you do queries again, I'm really only want to focus on the geospatial support here. And there are basically two different indexes. You can get a 2D index, which is a bit faster, or a 2D sphere index. And I can go into the technical details here, but it's much easier to show with an image. 2D index basically means it's flat earth, where you can't follow it. And 2D sphere index is basically a spherical hole where you can do queries against that. You can do distances, and it covers the poles correctly, and it covers the, 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 the meridians correctly, and things like that. So that is basically what you'll be using if you're using a geospatial data. And as and then let's have a quick look at how, this, and how you actually store database or information about geospatial things in it. And MongoDB does that with GeoJSON. And GeoJSON is a very standard form format that's used by very many other things, as well as Leaflet, which makes it actually really useful format because I can query a database and I don't actually have to do any sort of changes to the data. But it's straight into Leaflet, which will, will render the information for me. Uh, the geostate, uh, the adjacent format is, is this compact, no, compound data type. It has multiple fields in there and it has a race in there. And it's something that in like Postgres, you have to, to have a specific data type. But whereas in MongoDB, it is actually not a specific data type, it's just normal data that you have a special index around. And we support many other things here. We support points, uh, I'll see, I'll show you. points like pubs. Uh, but focus on all the data that we want to be given. It'll be handy though. And what I've done here is actually imported some of the open stream data in there. And then use the mouse point here. Let's not do this in all these ways. No real things. So there's some information that's like an open stream of ID in there. But there's also the L fields uh, containing the points, uh, saying, telling you where the pub is. And then there's another field called TS, which has all the open stream of tags associated with it. If you're trying to figure out why I've stored those as strings, you can talk to me afterwards, because that is too complicated to talk about here. Uh, so we have points in here, we have lines, uh, lines like streets, and of course a line has multiple data points, so you can see that there is an array of points, and again some facts associated with that. Uh, similarly, we have polygons, which are closed lines, um, and it supports like a multiple frequency multiple items where you can have multiple, they have kind of a polygon with like holes in it and, and in those holes and then holes that are part of the polygon that's quite complex and supports quite a lot and the more analogy but even the more confusing it gets as well. And of course after having in this data import into the database there's stuff you can query as you can uh, find stuff near a point. 
find me five, find me five plus pubs, or find all the pubs among them by using a, a query where you can yeah, basically give the outline at the moment and it'll tell you all the pubs. It's so not, not a good query to show only the pubs, it's just too many of them. And then there's geo intersects, but it's much better to actually show that. So, usually I do this as a live demo, but I can't because this is PDF. You can't actually drag a lot of things in PDF. But just to have a quick overview of how, how this query syntax looks like, it's very different from SQL. Because you basically, uh, it's a top ECTS amenity, so basically it tells me, give me all the books. And then it also matches against the alt tools, and it gives you the, the near keyword. And the near keyword basically is find it near this geometry, which in this case is a point, but it could be a line or a polygon as well. And then tell me the maximum distance of 500 meters. Basically, what it says, give me all the books near this point, which happens to be right here. And then give me all the plus within 500 meters, and then limit it to 5. Um, my early slide has a rate of a kilometer and no limit, and that is better than all And this is kind of crazy as an HPAC. You can do the same thing with within, I'm not going over all the code, but uh, similar things. Uh, actually, quite an interesting way how it works with overlapping cells for matching, but again, I probably shouldn't go away with it. There's a good, uh, good paper done by Google. And just to show the difference between within and intersex. Like if you, this is the outline of St. James, one of the parts and all. Um, if you tell it get me everything in this part, it actually will not tell you the roads that go from in the park to outside of it because they're not fully within the document. So in this case, you do uh, intersex, where you actually do get it. And I was quite wondering, but I did this query actually, I saw those lines here. I was wondering what the hell are they, and I looked into them and I actually did it in my true path. So I wasn't quite expecting to see this. They should have done from. And of course, lots of information here about all the different elements. And there's a lot of type of query that you can just call aggregation. And aggregation is really meant to do lots of data manipulations on the data that you have stored. And this is a feature that normally would allow you to actually modify the documents that you query, and which is necessary if you want to add distance information. Um, so for example, here I, I do a query around here again with the aggregation framework, which is a different side of the query language. And basically ask me, well I'm asking it here, it's like, find again all the things near this point. And I again say the maximum distance has to be 500 meters. Um, your, the distance field one basically says use this field name for storing the information on it. And then I do an org query to say find all the amenities that are either pubs, bars, or restaurants. And the color coding basically tells me whether the pub has a real ill or a real side, which I find very important. Actually, I did this query early today, and, and although I have added a real ill and a real side attack, uh, all the people are it as well because the first time that I know when I did this, only the poll one. Information improved. It's always great if you don't do it yourself. Um, so yeah, there's a very quick overview of um, of geospatial information. Mongoby, I can talk about um, an hour and a half, three hours, but only 50 minutes. <coughs> really, can't talk about everything else. We'll talk about. So as a very quick overview, MongoDB for geospatial use. Uh, it's a NoSQL database. It support for large amounts of data as well. So it's very easy to get started with and also very easy to scale to multiple servers. Which is something that relational database like Postgres Post are not necessarily very great and you just need to take and bring in um, Whereas MongoDB is more focused on having lots of smaller machines that you can then use to get. Uh, at some point I'd like to experiment getting all of open street web data, the whole planet of just fair amounts of data. Uh, upload it into a moment, you know, in, into multiple machine run the moment of to see what kind of performance uh, benefits or disasters you get for that. I can help you with that. Good, let's talk about that then later in the book. Um, and it also allows you to actually uh, do lots of geospatial queries with all the credits and also say, find me all the books or find me all the roads and things like that. And basically, I'm using uh, lots of scripts behind there to. Uh, to have a few demos on my own website to see um, what sort of information I can get out of OpenStreetMap and basically 
don't usually find any close spots or any close deceptive values. Alright, those are the same. Uh, are there any questions? <laughs> right, there, you go. So your example of the underground lines yes. in the set and St. James's Pond yes. suggests that two dimensions might not be enough. Mm -hmm. do, do, Correct. Do you have any support for higher dimensional no. spatial indexes? <laughs> so there's no higher dimensions than 2D at the moment. Right. Uh, something we have looked at and something we apply to do at some point. Um, but for that to work normally we need to support like plugable indexes. And that is the next iteration of, of the database. Yeah, it's, it's on the list somewhere, but it's not very high priority. Yeah. 